Well, good morning, everyone. Happy uh, Resurrection Day. This is the day of the resurrection. We need to be happy. We need to celebrate it. And uh, it's wonderful that the Lord has given us this important day to look up to so that we can uh, see that the Christian life, our Christian life, should truly be victorious and be happy because of that resurrection. So again, we go back to a portion of the story as we look at these uh, several things and review a little bit again. I have entitled my message this morning, Forward with Resurrection Life. So as we have accepted Jesus Christ, we now come a life that is resurrected. We call it resurrection life. That means it is the victorious Christian life that we should live every day, the resurrection life, and the Christian ought to have this kind of life every day so that uh, he will truly glorify the Lord and will have all the joy in his life. Now there are two things I would like us to take up this morning in connection with this and we will complete uh, these thoughts tonight. First, I wrote here Review of actual resurrection of Jesus Christ. So for the Jews, you know, Jesus was a Jew. He was born in Israel. And the things that we now celebrate or we look up to, uh, many of these were, you know, started in Israel. So for, for the Jews, Jew, Jew, people of Israel, in other words, the most important is the Passover. You remember the Passover? Passover was that day when Israel uh, went out of Egypt. And uh, that day, they celebrated the Passover to have a future uh, assurance that the Lord has released them from slavery of Egypt to go to the Promised Land. So that is the, the day of Passover for the Jews. Now, uh, in our time, we look at the Passover for us Christians. The most important day is not only Passover. It is the day of the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. So these are the two very important days that we are celebrating this week, the Holy. And then so, to make it more clear to us, two things in the thoughts that I would like to share with you as I announce. First, the review of the actual resurrection. Second, relieving the resurrection power. So the Jewish day starts at sundown. So that means that uh, today, uh, for us, it's Sunday. But this afternoon at 6 o'clock in Israel, it will already be Monday. Una sila, 6 hours sa ato. But our Monday will start tonight at 12. Pagalas to si Monday na nato, pero tulog matatanan. So for uh, uh, ordinary people, they say that it's good that that shift of the day is at 12 o'clock because it is you are sleeping. When you sleep, it is one day ahead. And then when you woke up in the morning, it's new day. And so they said it's better. It's more meaningful. But anyway, for Israel, their day, the moment this afternoon comes at 6, it's already the Monday. So why is it that way? We do not know. All we know is that when the Lord created, created the earth, remember in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, what does the Bible say? And it was evening, and morning, the first day. And then, pag succeeding verses, it, it will say again, it was morning, uh, it was evening, and morning, second day. So why is it that in the original creation of God, he sta started to count the days with evening, and second, and morning. And so because of that, the Jews, mga Hudyo, they start counting the days, 
at evening time, 6 o'clock p.m. So, afternoon at 6 o'clock, it will be Monday already in Israel. So, we say, Pastor Bali, Pero, remember, original na sila. Because in the Bible, when God created the earth, he, when He counted the day, He started with the night and then ended with the day. So that's settled now. In a way, we'll go to uh, the uh, Holy Week. That that day when the Lord was born was uh, the Lord was crucified on the cross. Okay. So in the outline I wrote here, 8 a.m. That is before uh, 6 p.m. So between the time in Israel it was Nisan 13. Nisan 13. It's called the day of preparation until today. It is day of preparation when during that special week of the Holy Week, Nisan 13 is always the day of preparation. Though the day of preparation is only once a year, preparation for the Passover, in other words. Kung sa ato, preparation for the Pyrnes Sun. Now, uh, on that Nisan 13, you remember the uh, day before that, they had last supper and then that night after the last supper he prayed in the garden of Gethsemane and then you remember that uh, after the prayer in Gethsemane he struggled there then uh, Judas together with the soldiers came and you remember that Judas kissed him to indicate that the man he kissed is the one they want so it was middle of the night Judas kissed him and then he was arrested by the soldiers and so first they went to Pilate then they went to Herod and then they went to Pilate so in about 6 in the morning now so that's Nisan 13 it was the time when they they beat him soldiers beat him because it was already declared by Pilate that uh, Barabbas will be released and this man Jesus will be nailed to the cross. And you remember all the other happenings there? By 9 o'clock they went to Golgotha, outside the city of Jerusalem, and then he was nailed to the cross. And you remember between 9 and then 12, it was noon time, and then starting 12 o'clock at noon, it darkened ng ngit ngit ang kalibutan until about 3 o'clock. And you remember, you know, what we celebrate usually as the seven sayings. Last uh, Friday evening when we had our pasture, I repeated to you and explained a little bit the seven sayings that the Lord said while He was on the cross. And you remember the last uh, two Two sayings, six and seven. Uh, it was a, it was a cry of victory. Number six, he sh shouted with victory. It is finished. So pagdaog, di ba? And then ang number seven, he shouted again, victory. Father, into my hand, thy hands, I commit my spirit. So that is now the culmination. So it was about two or past three that Nisan thirteen. So he died. It took some time to take his body down from the cross. And you remember who was the man who requested for his body? One of the believers, secret believers, uh, Joseph of Arimathea. Now together with other secret believer, a senator, Nicodemus, a senator in Israel. And so they prepared the body of Jesus for burial. And so that they put them him in the tomb of uh, Joseph of Arimathea. So my, you see George, Joseph of Arimathea, diba? He had the honor of sharing his tomb with the Savior of the world. He reserved it for himself, but now, because he's still alive, the Lord was put there in his tomb. So, by 6 o'clock, tapos na ang tanan. By 6 o'clock in the afternoon, I mean... Uh, it was already evening in Jewish culture. So everybody had to go home because it is now Passover. 
So what is our what is that Passover? It is a very very special day. One of the most holy days in Israel, Passover. The other one is in September October. Duhalan Asia in Israel. Passover because it was the time when to remember that the Lord rescued them from Egypt and went out of slavery to go to the promised land. So Passover, they were passing over, you know, from slavery. And they passed over from the sea, the great Mediterranean Sea, to go into the, the land of promise. So that is the meaning of Passover. Mag, uh, what do you call that? Sa among, sa ilonggo, maglokso ka? Magjump ka ba? Jump from uh, the negative to the positive. So the, you pass over. That is the word there. Now, we see here 6 p.m. to the next day. 6 p.m. is Nisan for 14. So, Nanisha, uh, Jesus is in the tomb. It is called the, the High Sabbath or the Passover. Celebration of the Passover. And so, all the Jewish men are required to attend assembly in the temple. So, what uh, lalaki lang? I don't know. But uh, the Bible says, because it's a very, very special day, so men first, as leaders, should worship the Lord there during this day of Passover. And you see, after that Passover, they went home and then they rested. So uh, during this Passover, uh, 6 to 6 in the afternoon, so that was uh, Nisan 14. Pagabot naman sa afternoon at 6 p.m., about 6 p.m., sunset. In other words, the word there is not actually 6 p.m., kundi the word in the Bible is at sunset. Sunset. So now they, they rested again because that is now the Feast of the Bread. Feast of the Unleavened Bread. It is a continuation of the Passover. At this time, the unleavened bread is the symbol of eating the bread without this symbol of holy life. And they will uh, dedicate that to, to give glory to the Lord. And uh, it was also the day when the leader said, okay, uh, they went to the governor Pilate. This man said that uh, uh, when he dies, he will, he will run. So he said, maybe it's very dangerous for his uh, disciples to steal his body. And then they will say, he has risen again. He's not there in the tomb. So we ask that there were guards to put there in the tomb. So that's the reason why there were guards. And then it was also during that free time when the women gathered spices that they will put in the body of Jesus Christ because when he was buried after the pastor they had no chance to anoint his body so because they love him they prepared you know, very sweet uh, savor uh, things to do, put upon his body so it was the day it ended the unleavened bread but you see by 6 o'clock that day 6 p.m. again. Pag uh, gabi ina. Again, they have to rest because it's ready. Uh, the, the term here is uh, Sabbath day, day. Sabado. Sabahodio. So the Sabbath is different from the Passover. The Passover is the special Sabbath. Now this p.m. Friday is already Pa, uh, Sabbath day, regular pa, Sabbath day. So that means within the Holy Week, there were two Sabbaths of the Jews. One was the special Sabbath, the other was the regular Sabbath starting at 6 p.m. And because of that, the women were not able to go anymore to the tomb to anoint his body. So they have to wait another in the next morning, that will be Sunday, to anoint his body. But you see, during that, that day, they also celebrating another feast, Ikatulona. No? So Passover, Unang feast, 
and then Sabado, uh, uh, fr Friday, Saturday, Feast of the Unleavened Bread. Now, Saturday, Sunday, the third feast is the Feast of uh, the First Fruit or the bar Barley Harvest. Comes together with a regular Saturday, regular Sabbath day, Feast of the First Fruit. Why? Because in Israel, uh, in the time in March, April, they will uh, harvest. And the first fruit will be brought to the temple to be dedicated to the Lord. That's a wonderful uh, uh, thing to do. Like today, uh, some of our professionals in their first uh, uh, salary, they give it to the Lord. Or first, first harvest in their work or in their business or in their farm, they gave it to the Lord. And this time it was barley harvest. And so they brought it to the Lord. But since uh, this is now the Feast of the First Fruit, so it is a symbol also of, uh, of uh, a new life. You know, you know when the trees bear fruit, like the mango tree or the, the uh, banana tree bears fruit, it is a symbol of new life, new hope, new blessing. That's why the, the Jews look forward for that. But you know, it starts at 6 p.m. Saturday. It's already Sunday for them. The feast of the fruit. But since they have to go to sleep, so tulog na sad sila. And then, natural, early in the morning, they wake up. Like uh, what the Bible says, in the, early in the morning, that means already Sunday, very early, Magdalene went to the tomb. And the Lord is no longer there. He has risen from the dead and the rest of the story of the resurrection happened. So we are between 6 p.m. Saturday up, up to 12 o'clock or up to very early morning Sunday. Something happened. What was it that happened? And we read it a while ago in Luke chapter 24. So in the first day of the week, very early in the morning, certain other women you know, came to the tomb to bring, uh, you know, spices to put upon his body. And then as they were there, uh, the, the Lord was no more there. Actually, the story of this, what happened in the resurrection, is found in Matthew 20, 28. And just briefly, I will read it to you. Now, after the Sabbath, the first day of the week, began to dawn Mary, Magdalene, and the other Mary went to the tomb. So that means, ulahi na sila, nakauna, yun niya nga naglakad sa tomb, amo si Mary Magdalene. Sang wala pa tao. So later on, mga the other women. But it says here, in verse 2, Behold, there was a great earthquake, and from an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, and came and rolled back from the, from the door and sat on it. And his countenance was like lightning. So it was the Lord's shining light, lightning. As in the Mount of Transfiguration. And his clothing was white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. Nalipong di sila. That very early morning. So this is the story now of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that is just reviewing, you know, the actual resurrection. So here are thoughts that I would like to share with you uh, in connection with uh, here in the notes. Resurrection of Christ before the end of Nas, Nas, Nisan for 16. So Jesus resurrected exactly three days and three, three nights completed as uh, it, it was uh, prophesied by the Lord himself in Matthew chapter 12, verse 40. As uh, Jonah was three days and three days in the belly of the fish, so the Son of Man will be at the bottom of the earth. Now, my problem lang Jagamai. During the time of Constantine, you know, Constantine was converted to Christianity in 312 AD. And Constantine, the emperor of Rome, because during the time, 
Constantine was in influenced by the opinion of Christians. They said, during the time, Christians hated the Jews for killing Jesus. Grab you know, after Jesus was okay, uh, resurrected, about 100 years after, up to 1000 AD, Christians all over the world hated the Jews because they said, we blame the Jews for killing Christ. Grab it. No? They could blame the Jews for killing Christ. Suppose the Jews to kill Christ. What will we be saved? <laughs> so, ano nga basulon pa man nila Jew during the time? But anyway, it was declared by Constantine, it is so. So, he said, from now on, we will celebrate the Holy Week on Friday and Saturday and Sunday is Resurrection. So, giwala na nila ang Jewish practice nga Nisan 14, 15, and 16. But anyway, the Nisan 14, 15, 16 is in the same, the same week that we are celebrating Friday, Saturday, Sunday as the week the Lord Jesus died. So, they stopped following the Jewish date and sequence and changed the celebration from Friday to Sunday. Now, that the celebration of the Jews always coincides with the full moon. You know, when Jesus died, it was always full moon. And you know when the full moon is? This week. The full moon is today. When you look at the calendar, it's April, April 1. That means today is Passover in Israel. It does not change in Israel. Basta full moon and then one uh, that is always Passover. And so for them, the resurrection is February 2. And then kano sa ang resurrection? Ang feast of uh, first fruit kano sa siya? So today is natural. Monday is 2. And then number 3, Tuesday. So sa Israel, the actual date of the resurrection will still be on just Tuesday, the feast of the first fruit. It is always the same in Israel, prosato, because of the decree of uh, uh, the Emperor Constantine, na changed the nilang Friday, Saturday. So sa ato, per, kwana siya permanent. Though sa Israel permanent, sad pero badapat, Nisan 14, 15, 16. Now, Anyway, it's settled now, and uh, we are celebrating that. And it's nothing to worry about. It's nothing to fight about. It's just, you know, uh, making plain to us uh, history. And uh, what, what is now the relationship of the death, of the resurrection of Christ, in, I mean, to our lives? So the second point I put here, reliving the resurrection power. So we do not only believe, but we'll claim the power of the resurrection in our lives today. So here are important thoughts. Truth of the resurrection. First, the resurrection was fulfilled by, foretold by the, prof, by the prophets. So the Lord said that in, as uh, I, they wrote that in Psalm 16 verse 10. He said that the Lord will not leave my soul in sea of all. So it seems that David is suggesting there through the Spirit that when the Lord died, he actually went to see all the place of the dead in order to take away, you know, Abraham's bosom from the bottom and up to heaven. That's why today when we say of heaven, it's already up. But you see in the Old Testament, when they think of the place of the dead, of joy, it's still below. You know, like what I told you last Friday, uh, the uh, when uh, when you know kings king uh, king 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 Saul you know Solomon prophet Samuel prophet Samuel came from the bosom of the earth but now it's always up so what were the things that happened there it was fulfilled that it will happen the resurrection. 
Also in Psalm, uh, Isaiah 26:19, the Lord, Lord through Isaiah is saying about the resurrection. It's a beautiful passage here. I would like to read it to you. Psalm, uh, Isaiah 26, verse 19. Your, your dead shall live together with my dead body. They sh shall arise, awake and sing, you who dwell in dust. For your dew is like the dew of, of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Now why did Isaiah say that? In 26 verse 19. Actually, the scholars say he was talking about the resurrection. That's why it was talked about the fulfillment of the resurrection. The, it was it foretold by the prophets and now it's fulfilled in scriptures. Uh, the fulfillment we find here in Luke 24, verse 45, which is part of uh, the text that we read this morning. Luke, Luke 24, but later on in verse 45 and 46, here is what it says here. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. So that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name to all so here, verse 46, it must necessary, it should die, it should rise from the dead. So in other words, the Christian, Christian in Europe should not blame the, the Jews that the Lord died. Because it was the plan of the, God to, for him to die. Because without his dying, he will not rise again, again and give us our salvation. And another one, the resurrection of Christ assures us of the forgiveness of our sins. First uh, Corinthians 15, 17. There are many things that Paul has written here in First Corinthians chapter 15 that relates to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So First Corinthians 15, 17, I read here. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sin. So, dapat mabanhaw siya. Otherwise, there is no forgiveness of our sin if he did not rise from the dead. Another one, uh, not only forgiveness of our sin, also justification. The word such justification is this. If you are accused of a crime and then you defend yourself or you have a good lawyer to defend yourself, so the, the lawyer will justify you and prove that you are innocent. And so to justify Romans chapter 4, verse uh, 25, Paul wrote here, and let me read. Jesus Christ raised from the dead, verse 25, now, who was delivered because of our offenses, and was raised because of our justification. He was raised up to prove that what he paid for our sins is accepted by the Lord. So I am a sinner, you are a sinner, because I am now washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I am now justified. Paul wrote it that way, just as if I have never sinned. This is what theologians uh, explain the word justify or justification. Just as if I have not sinned. Ako nga may sala, wala na ko sala. Because Jesus paid it all. And then it's not only that I have no more uh, sins committed, I have hope. Leads us back to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19. It says here, If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most Pitchable. In the original King James, it says there, most miserable. But no, Paul said, we are not 
miserable because our hope is not only in this world. It is heaven because Jesus rose from the grave. Another one here I wrote in the outline, effective preaching. Now we can preach with power, with effectivity because the Lord has risen. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14. Starting with 13, if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty. And your faith is also empty. In the old King James, it says here, the preaching is vain. Wala pulos. Empty. Murahangin lang na nagatupa sa mga unahuna sa tao. Wala substance. Ulay tinood nga meaning. But no, we have a faith that is very effective. And when we give the testimony, it will bear fruit. And then finally, the resurrection of Christ gives us faith. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14, I already said it. If Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is empty. And then jump again. Again, verse 17, if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. So our faith is empty, useless. We are still in our sins. But the Lord has risen, so our sins have been forgiven. Our faith is not useless. It is real and it is wonderful. So two more thoughts here I wrote. The resurrection of Christ is the proof of being the Son of God. We are now sons of God, not sons of the devil. Going back to Acts chapter 13, verse 33. Paul wrote here, Acts 13, 33. I read, God has fulfilled this for us, these children in that, his children, in that he has raised up Jesus. It is also written in the second psalm. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. So what is uh, uh, the book of Acts telling us, uh, Dr. Luke, and quoting Psalm chapter 2, that the Lord said, Today I have begotten you. Today, when the Lord Jesus Christ died and he asserted he is the Son of God who died for our sins, now if we believe in him, we are also begotten as children of God. And we have, we have the right to claim that we are children of God. And uh, uh, to complete that, in Romans chapter 1, verse 4, Paul wrote, and uh, declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from it. So in this verse 4, the Lord said that the Lord Jesus Christ was declared as the Son of God by the power of the resurrection. So without the power of the resurrection, we cannot uh, endorse or we could not say Jesus is truly the Son of God because he was resurrected. And today, by our faith in the Lord, we can also be called to be truly the Son of God because we have been resurrected from our sins. And someday when we die, we will have the actual resurrection and glory. And then finally, the last point I said here, uh, relieving the resurrection power means effected by the power of God. So, the power of God that has given us this important power. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. I read here, But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Now Jesus is risen. God has given life to the body of Jesus Christ. So now, by His Spirit, we who believe in Him, 
will be given our the power of God to be victorious and to live a life that is pleasing to Him. It was the Spirit of God that came to our lives that gave us new life in Christ. So just briefly to give you a reminder that's very important. Are you now resurrected in the life in Christ? And uh, are you sure now that you belong to Him? And that, can you say now, you have been dead and you have been given your life in Christ Jesus? Because if you do not have that, that means you have not truly accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. This was the question I asked our uh, brethren who are to be baptized uh, this noon. I asked them, have you really accepted the Lord Jesus Christ? Because if you have, the Lord said, okay, your sins have been forgiven and you have been given new life and life of resurrection through Jesus Christ. And if you happen to look to hold this, our new bulletin today, uh, in the other side of uh, this page here is uh, 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 printing of uh, an old message that I gave many years ago and I have entitled it Press On in the Power of the Resurrection so what is the meaning of this the Christian life is a sequence of living dying spiritually that's it your life when we came to the Lord Jesus Christ you have been born again and now you have a spiritual life and that spiritual life is composed of living and dying and rising again that means Every day we live in Christ, we rise, or we die to our sinful thoughts, sinful character, sinful uh, ambition, simple uh, plans of our lives. We throw them away, we bury them with the Lord Jesus Christ, and then we rise again in a new kind of life that is not thinking about all those evil things. So now we have the resurrection life. That's why I would like to ask you that. Have you experienced the resurrection life now? And you believe there is that kind of resurrection life in you since the day you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. And right now as you think about the resurrection life, can you recall and experience that resurrection power right now in your life? So to continue reading here, this symbolically speaks about going deeper in our spiritual life in going towards maturity we Christians pass through to different times of our lives which are the following first part is death to sin wherein we experience power to serve and pass through different levels of struggle in work in family in life and community or church life so do you pass through those struggles today or last week or previous month struggles in your Christian life whether in your profession whether in your at home whether in your life or in your church or in your family all those struggles are very normal and the Lord said if we claim the resurrection power we will be able to overcome the temptations or the sins that are still there but God uses this to remind us this one is wrong this one is wrong you have to to kill it and then revive it in the life of resurrection through Jesus Christ to continue as we receive empowerment for this we discover the law of victory in Christ through the resurrection power so victory in Christ through resurrection power John the Beloved suffered imprisonment, torture, and banishment, but remained steadfast in his loyalty to the Lord. So John the Beloved, you know, one of the disciples of Jesus, suffered such torture. In his old age, uh, he lived again. I mean, uh, he did not die of his tortures, but he lived to write the book of Revelation. But his body was full of scars of imprisonment, many times of imprisonment. 
during uh, his time. He finished his life work in triumph. The secret of resurrection, of resurrection for him is the love of God in Christ. This is achieved through the leading and power of the Spirit who leads and intercedes for us through our suffering that leads to glory. It is also God who works all these things for our good as children. So now, have you experienced that power of resurrection? Have you claimed Romans 8.28? That uh, in all things, you, have, you can claim uh, victory as the children of God. So what uh, trials and testings you passed through this week? Maybe no money? Maybe uh, no job? Maybe uh, the manager told you, Next month, kamo, pila kamo kabuok, wala na kamo trabaho din hi kay, you will be faced out because our company is uh, uh, changing its emphasis. emphasis. So, so, by next month, wala na kamo trabaho. Now, you have those emotions in your heart. Do you feel the spirit of resurrection? You say, Lord, you can give me another job. You can provide my needs. Lord, you could heal me. Lord God, inspire me again to go on with life. And so it is also his desire to give us all things through Christ. He said, I will give you all things. So don't worry, I will give you another job. In order to accomplish all this, we must die to the world and live a virtuous life in Christ. Give up a sin lifestyle and Pride, then humble, humbly obey Him. Sinful lifestyle. Before we have fully dedicated the Lord, our lives to the Lord, ang ato life lifestyle very sinful. But now we realize what the difference between the holy or godly lifestyle versus the sinful lifestyle. And so we become humble and obey Him. So to forsake the world is to give up ambitions and be satisfied with life in the center of God's will. So professionals, are you satisfied now with your life in the center of the will of God? Now what about your ambition? Have you yielded that to the Lord now? It is also God who works all things together for your good. Then we must stop pursuing worldly success and enter the joy and peace of uh, uh, surrendered life. So what is it that will satisfy you? Yes, you have been dreaming and uh, wanting that all your life, even while you're in Cebu, wanting that. But the Lord said, if you want, have, want to have true success and joy and peace, you live your life, whether in the family or whether in your, your company, in your profession, in your single life, whatever it is, you must live a surrendered life. And then another paragraph here. Resurrection life is like a key to, to a grand and beautiful mansion that can be mine if I only enter in. So the Lord said, okay, I'm giving you mansions in heaven. Not, not only mansions in heaven, mansions here in Mandawi. If you want it, but on condition, you must adjust your life to obeying the Lord. And He will give you those blessings if it is His will. Or it is like an engineer or engine that gives extra power to drive the plane much faster than before. So, sportsmen, when they drive a uh, uh, special cars you know, for uh, for important uh, races. They put uh, special effects in the engine or in the gasoline so that it will give more power. It will run faster, and it will uh, it will win in that very important uh, 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 contest there of uh, sports sports cars. So life is like that. The Lord can give us extra mileage or extra effort, extra power 
to succeed in whatever are the difficulties that you are facing in your life. So like an Indian with extra power, and that extra power is the secret of the power of the resurrection and the power of the Spirit. It is also like a diamond stone that will be priceless if one only knows how to cut it correctly. You know a diamond is only a stone, ugly stone taken out of uh, uh, the rocks in the mountains or under the earth. How can you make it a very expensive diamond? You bring it to the, to the artisan, the expert, and he will look at it in a microscope. Uh, if there are any cracks, and then he will design the right kind of design for that diamond so that he will to make it a very brilliant uh, stone for a very important ring, maybe the ring of a king or a queen. And so he will cut it little by little and design it. And then the ugly design of that, that rock diamond stone will be removed. And then the clear lines of the diamond will be seen. And the moment it is finished, he will expose it to the light and oh, it will give out so many brilliant reflection of the light. It's very, very bright. And then you give it to the jewelry store and then they will offer it for sale. Whoever will pay the highest price for, for this diamond is his. Usually big diamonds that are very precious are offered to the queen of in England or the king of England or other uh, important nations or the richest billionaires in the world. And then if they are interested, they will buy it. How much? Well, sky is the limit for the price of that most precious diamond. But they did not realize what it took, you know, to make that diamond very expensive and very brilliant. They did not realize, you know, the effort of the expert cutter, the artisan who designed that, and to take away all the cracks uh, so that the only, the hardest part of that diamond will be left and then designed into a very, very brilliant uh, uh, thing that could be put in a ring or a crown of a monarch and it will be very, very expensive. So our life is like that. So finally, uh, final paragraph I wrote here, finally, pressing on completely into a victorious life is yielding to the power of resurrection love that gives life to anything or anybody lost, destitute, destroyed, and dead. Many people are lost, discouraged, destitute, like dying, but oh, the love of Christ that is like a diamond shining upon that particular soul could revive him and me, you, who cannot love him because we don't like him at all. That uh, power of the love of God that is like a very brilliant diamond will change, you know, our dislike of him to be, to be a very, very brilliant diamond that could like him and serve him, consider him a brother or a sister in the Lord. So are you... Is is your life just like that? As you look at other people, like the skeleton that, recon that is reconnected to each other in the valley of the dry bones. You remember when I preached uh, several months ago when I mentioned the vision of Ezekiel in Ezekiel 7? The Bible, the Bible says, the Lord gave him, brought him to a desert where there are many bones of dead people. And then the Lord said to him, Pray. Prophesy to the wind. And when Ezekiel prophesied to the wind, they, it blew and they blew together, you know, all the bones to put them together. One is in the arm, in the hands, in the legs, and in the, the body here, the skeleton. And then another is in the head. And then they put him together. And then according to Ezekiel 31, the Lord said, Prophesy, son of man. He said, he prophesied. And when he prophesied, flesh, you know, covered the skeleton. So there was no flesh. 
a beautiful face, beautiful head, beautiful feet, beautiful body. And then he said, when you prophesy, this is the nation of Israel. They have scattered like skeletons in the world because God has punished them for their sin against him. Now time will come and the wind will blow from all over the world and gather again Israel to the land that God has reserved them. And then the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord will blow upon them and they will have skin and flesh and out of those separated Jews in the world they will build a nation. So today, 2018, one of the richest nation in the world is Israel. One of the important uh, you know, inventions in computers and uh, you know, other modern gadgets now are made in Israel. And even the Philippines buys so many of these things made in Israel. That's why some of our engineers are in Israel working there. Some of our, uh, uh, our, our ladies, our women are working in households of uh, the Jews, you know, helping them. Because God has, is blessed, blessing and this nation that came from the valley of the dry bones, Israel. And so it's like your life and my life, scattered, you know, without God, worshiping the wrong religion, uh, terrible saints of our religion, and wrong doctrines about prayer, about uh, uh, salvation, about forgiveness, about worship, about the church. Now we throw them away and we go to the biblical teaching about who is truly saved? How can a man be born again? How can this born again person live a new life? How can he become a, a worthy person? part of the church of Jesus Christ who lives a holy and beautiful life who but do that only God and we can have it if we profess to accept and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ so put this all together what do we have this is what we say the power of the resurrection life so the question do you have the resurrection life in your life have you been struggling with you know Doubts and fears, evil thoughts, dirty thoughts in your in your mind, and uh, struggling with uh, looking for love, something to care for, thing and care about, and you are lonely. And who could satisfy that? The power of the resurrection that could heal and satisfy your life. And now you are dissatisfied with your work because your salary is very small, so you want to have a bigger salary. So you said, you will say, Lord, help me. So the Lord will give you uh, the power of the resurrection. Maybe he will give you a new job with better salary and a better office and better future for you. So all this signify to us the power of the resurrection life. Or you will say, Pastor, I'm satisfied with my life without any resurrection at all. Okay, no lang ko. You, know, you don't have to live that way. You don't have to live in a very unhappy and unsuccessful life. Be, be ambitious spiritually. And be very ambitious spiritually in this world and in the world to come. And all the promises of God will be yours. On one very important key that he is giving us, reminding us today. You claim upon yourself the resurrection power of Jesus. And you apply it upon yourself, the resurrection life, and then accept it and be happy with it and be contented with it. And that way, the resurrection of Jesus will truly be true to your life and my life. Shall we pray? Thank you, Lord, for these thoughts and very important truth that we could apply to us ourselves right now. So, by your power, help us to know desire the spiritual life through the resurrection and help us to do it in our own very lives right now so that we can live in the success and the joy of resurrection life in jesus name amen